Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today we'll be discussing the liquid metallic hydrogen model of the Sun from the inside out. We start with the core of the Sun. Using helioseismology, we know that this region experiences solid body rotation of 430 nanohertz, as we saw in this video. This rotation occurs not only at the core surface, but also as we penetrate the core and independent of latitude, as seen in this figure. Note in the liquid metallic hydrogen model that the core constitutes a substantial portion of the inner sun, extending from about 0.64 solar radii. This larger core matches helioseismic measurements. The core is best represented as adopting the most stable of metallic hydrogen lattices, the body-centered cubic. This crystal structure for the core was proposed independently by Setsuo Ishimaru, as I discussed in this paper. Ichimaru assumed a 150 grams per centimeter cube density for the core, like the standard gaseous model. But in the liquid metallic hydrogen solar model, the Sun should have a relatively uniform density below the photospheric layer, not increasing by orders of magnitude beyond 1.4 grams per centimeter cubed, the Sun's average density. Where the solid solar core meets the liquid body, the tachocline layer exists. This region extends from about 0.64 solar radii to about 0.7 solar radii. The rotation of the core against this liquid causes huge shear forces in this region, which have been verified by helioseismic studies. Above this relatively thin tachocline rests the convective zone. Like a pot of water on the stove, this liquid metallic hydrogen flows to carry heat convectively from the core to the photosphere, where it can be dissipated as light. The presence of the convective zone indicates that the solar core is constantly attempting to dissipate its heat. Unlike the body-centered cubic structure of the core, this region of the Sun is comprised of type II metallic hydrogen, which is a compressed and therefore more metallic hexagonal planar structure. The heat produced in the core has now traveled using convection to the surface of the Sun, the photosphere. This region has previously been described as boiling as we saw in this video. Solar eruptions cause transverse waves to ripple across the surface while matter is ejected from the Sun and splashes back down onto the photosphere with satisfying heaviness. The photosphere is built from type I metallic hydrogen which acts as a weak semi-metal. It also possesses a hexagonal planar structure, but one which is somewhat less compressed than the more metallic type II hydrogen found in interior layers. It is this graphite-like liquid metallic hydrogen structure which emits heat energy as light into space. The method by which this occurs has been previously shown in depth in this video. The varying metallic character of type I and type II metallic hydrogen can also be used to account for limb darkening and for explaining the emission of structures at or near the photospheric level, including sunspots, granules, and faculi. An in-depth explanation was provided in this video. Because type I and type II metallic hydrogen share the hexagonal planar structure of graphite, these materials also accommodate what are known as intercalate regions, first described in this paper. Hydrogen atoms make up the hexagonal planar lattice, while non-hydrogen atoms are located between these planes. The presence of intercalate regions is vital to properly understanding the behavior of the Sun and the stars, and we will return to this idea in future videos. Type I and Type II metallic hydrogen can also be viewed as a one-component plasma, wherein the protons are restricted to their lattice points with the electrons freely delocalized as we saw in this video. Now, in the liquid metallic hydrogen model of the Sun, there is no radiative zone which had characterized the standard model as we saw in this video. Objects simply do not radiate internally, but use conduction and convection to achieve this end. Immediately above the photosphere is the chromosphere. I have argued in this video that this region possesses condensed matter in the form of dense hydrogen. The exact structure is not clear, but might resemble this lattice structure. In the chromosphere, 
we also find atoms, molecules, and ions. The region plays a critical role in the metallic hydrogen model as the site of hydrogen recondensation. It is the presence of emission lines in the chromosphere that leads to this conclusion. This topic has been described in detail in these papers and will be addressed in future videos. The important point for now is that in this model the chromosphere has a real function. This is a central difference relative to the random nature advanced for this region in the standard solar model. Above the chromosphere is the corona, which is seen as an awesome structure in eclipse photography. This region consists of type 1 metallic hydrogen, which has escaped the solar surface. From the top of the chromosphere and dominating out to about 2.3 solar radii is the K corona. This region produces its own polarized light, as discussed in this video. Its spectrum lacks the Fraunhofer lines of the photosphere. With increasing elevation, the corona cools. It is therefore no longer self-luminous, but rather starts to reflect mostly unpolarized photospheric light and the associated Fraunhofer lines. This is the region known as the F corona. With further distance from the sun, the coronal material begins to change its structure and gives rise to the thermal or T corona. The inner K corona is known to be associated with the production of emission lines, given rise to the E corona. In the standard model, this is interpreted as the result of strange heating of the corona to millions of degrees. This results in an increase in temperature with elevation above the solar surface because gases can only produce emission lines via heating in this model. But that conjecture is not reasonable and violates thermodynamic laws. The liquid metallic hydrogen model explains these emissions by invoking the high electron affinity of metallic hydrogen present in the corona. When free atoms interact with this material, they are stripped of many of their electrons, and a highly ionized species results. This mechanism allows the corona to harvest electrons and maintain the electrical neutrality of the solar body. We will return to these ideas later. I hope that you enjoyed this video on the liquid metallic hydrogen model of the sun and the stars. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to receive more Sky Scholar content and boost the signal of this channel, hit subscribe and join us on our journey from the sun to the stars and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below and I'll see you soon on our next video.